Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain about quadratic residue diffuser. So before we talk about quadratic residue diffuser, let's talk about what is diffusion and why is diffusion necessary. So diffusion in acoustics is the even spreading of sound energy in a given environment. A perfectly diffused sound space is the one where sound appears to be coming in from all directions. So if you're in a perfectly diffused sound field, and if you take a sound level meter and try to measure the sound pressure level in each and every location, if it is exactly the same, then it means you are in a perfectly diffused sound space. Even the reverb time should be the same at each and every location. If it is not, then it is not a perfectly diffused sound field. Now, an absorptive or reflective space can actually be converted into a diffuser space. How? With the help of a diffuser. Now, why diffusion? What is the purpose of diffusion? So, the purpose of sound diffusion is to even out the live and dead spots in a room where the waves would continue to reflect upon their same paths. So, diffusion helps us to disperse or distribute the sound energy evenly over a greater area. So, what a diffuser does is it reflects sound energy in an even and a predictable manner. Okay, it is different from reflection where, you know, the reflection is not controlled, whereas here it's predictable and it is controlled. And a diffuser doesn't remove the sound energy, but only radiates the sound energy in many directions. It leads to a live sounding space. One of the widely used diffusers is a quadratic residue diffuser, also known as a QRD. So a QRD, or also known as a Schroeder diffuser, consists of individual wells of different depths separated by a thin wall. So the thin wall is also referred to as a fin. So ratio of different well depths of a QRD correspond to the quadratic residue sequence. We'll talk about this later. A QRD spreads reflections spatially and temporally. So what does it mean? You know, it, it, it spreads the reflection spatially, meaning it distributes the sound energy over the entire space, but also it distributes in time, meaning, you know, it uh, changes the phase while reflecting, while it is, you know, spreading out the sound energy evenly, it changes, alters the phase, and that's how it, you know, uh, you know spreads reflections in time. And the number of wells in QRD is always a non-even prime number, such as 3, 5, 7, 11, so on. 2 is a prime number, but it is an even prime number, so we only want non-even prime numbers. In this video, we'll focus on you know, QRD with 7 wells. So it's also known as a N7 QRD or N7 diffuser. This is a top view of the N7 QRD with the well numbers mentioned. The well number starts from 0 and goes all the way up to 6, and there are 7 wells in total, as the name suggests, N7 QRD. Now, this is a sectional view. In the same orientation, you know, the well number starts from 0 and goes all the way up to 6. So, let's study the QRD in detail. So, first you have the back plate that holds all the wells and the fins together, and this, uh, vertical member that you see that's called as a fin and the thickness or the width of that fin is the fin width and you know these fins are actually dividing the entire diffuser you know they're acting as a partition and creating some spaces in between the fins and that space is you know the, those are the wells and that is you know the distance between those two fins is the well width and these are the well depths now built depth is the total height of the fin Whereas the design depth is actually the build depth plus the thickness of the back plate. Now this quantity design depth is very useful, very important for you know determining the frequency response of the QRD. You might observe one thing here: the well depth you know keeps changing. Here it's like zero, here it's different, here's different, here's different. So why is it like that? It's because it is based on the quadratic residue sequence, which we'll talk about now. So, you know, for N7 diffuser, we have a sequence in order, to, in order to get this pattern. So, you know, the well position numbers are 0 to 6. And in order to determine the sequence, we got to follow the Schroeder formula, which is well position squared times modulo of N. And SN is a sequence of relative depths of wells. We know N is uh, 7 because we're talking about N7 diffuser. So first, we square the well position, and when you say square, it's a quadratic operation. And then we take the modulo of that squared number, 
Okay, so what is modulo operator? The modulo operator divides a number by the modulus and keeps only what is remaining. It keeps only the remainder, also known as the residue. So that's how the name derives quadratic residue diffuser. Okay, so first we follow the uh, equation for SN. And first, what we got to do is we got to square the well position. So we know the well position is from 0 through 6. If we square that, we get the sequence 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. Next, what we got to do is we got to take the module of that well position squared. So what we do is we divide that particular square of the well by 7 and only capture the remainder. So for example, the first uh, you know, square of the well is 0. So 0 divided by 7 gives a remainder of 0. And 1 divided by 7 gives a remainder of 1. 4 divided by 7 gives a remainder of 4. So if you observe here, we're only capturing the remainder because that's what we're interested in to you know, determine the sequence. So if you repeat that calculation for all the well positions, you know, square the well position, take the modulo, you get the sequence 0, 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1. And that's, you know, what is that? That's the relative well depths. So if you look here, we have this well sequence uh, or the relative well depth sequence SN of 0, 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1. The design frequency is very important for accuracy. Its frequency response depends on that. So let's consider design frequency of 1000 Hz or 1 kHz. Now we can determine the design wavelength uh, by using the equation C equal F lambda, where C is the speed of sound in air, F is the frequency, and lambda is the wavelength. For practical purposes and ease of calculation, we're considering speed of sound to be 340 m per second. And if we plug in the values, we're going to get lambda to be 0.34 meter. Now, we'll talk about the well depths. So, so far what we've determined is the ratio of well depths, Sn, but not well depths. So, here by using this equation, we're going to capture what is the well depth. So, dn is the well depth and it is equal to Sn times the design wavelength over 2 times the number of wells. So if we input, uh, plug in the values of Sn that we have already calculated, we can determine the values of Dn. So for Dn uh, at the zeroth well, we're going to input Sn to be 0, so the answer is 0. For the next case, you know, it's going to be 1, and the next case is 4. You know, the rest of the terms, df over 2p is constant, so you can keep multiplying by the sequence and compute the well depths. So I've computed it and put in a table. So these are on the left, you have the uh, ratios and on the right, you have the well depths in centimeter. So if you, uh, you know, look at this table, if you just neglect the first row, you can see that the entire QRD is symmetric. Another important parameter of a QRD is a period width. So period width is, you know, the width accommodating even equal number of fins and wells. So we know this diffuser has seven wells, but there are eight fins for this particular standalone diffuser, if you can count it, because uh, we're enclosing the space. But period width is only, you know, the total width occupied by seven wells and seven fins, which means we gotta neglect the eighth fin so as to calculate the period width. Now, what is the significance of the period width? Now, period width helps us to determine, you know, the lowest frequency to be diffused. So period width is twice the design depth, and we know design depth is lambda over 2. So if you do the math, you get period width to be lambda. It gives us a very important information. The QRD has a frequency response. The well depth and well width are related to the wavelength of sound. So well depth is equal to lambda over 4, and well width is equal to lambda over 2. The well width uh, also determines the high frequency cutoff. So we can calculate the frequencies based on the well depth and obtain the frequency response of QRD. I've computed here based on the well depth and the relationship between the well depth and wavelength. I've computed the wavelength and then based on the relationship between speed of sound, frequency and wavelength, I calculated the frequency. So if you observe here, the deepest well that is 9.68 centimeter you know, is diffusing a frequency of 878 Hz, whereas the shallowest well, for practical purposes, is diffusing frequency of 3512 Hz. 
So for practical purposes, we can say that this diffuser has a frequency response from 878 Hz to 3512 Hz. Diffuser also, you know, diffuses temporally in addition to spatial diffusion. I've explained it before. So here it, you know, alters the phase of the incoming signal. So the, the well number zero doesn't, you know, uh, change any phase, whereas well number one, you know, alters the phase by 51 degrees, well number two, 205 degrees, and so on and so forth. Now these values I computed using the QRDU software. This is a uh, scaled down model that I created using uh, cardboard. So I used the relative depths. So this is the first uh, well, which is, you know, uh, zero centimeter deep. And the next one is, uh, you know, has a sequence of one and then four, two, two, four, and one. Okay, to conclude, the greater the number of wells in the diffuser, the greater the frequency range in which the diffuser is effective. The deeper the wells, the lower the you know lowest frequency that can be diffused. And 1D diffuser, uh, such as this QRD, scatters along one dimension. And the direction of scatter is always perpendicular you know, to the plane in which they are installed. So for example, if a diffuser is installed like this, the direction of scattering is going to be perpendicular to the direction in which it's installed. Alright, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.